We're joined by retired ISRO scientist C.R. Satya on the broadcast. Mr. Satya, good morning to you. How has India's space program gone leaps and bounds? What really prompted ISRO to grow in this manner is a sequential plan in which the rocket and the satellite technologies were developed in steps. And these steps were very specific to certain missions, like low orbit missions, then high orbit missions, solid, rock, solid propellant based rockets to liquid propellant rockets. And they all grew in stages until we became self-sufficient both in rocket technology and in satellite technology. Today, as you know, India is one of the five major space powers, which has its own capability to not only build its own satellite launch vehicles, but also the satellites themselves. And we have now come to a stage where our technology is being utilized by various other countries including advanced countries like United States or Canada or European Space Agency. So this is a long story, but yes. a very exciting story for me to recollect from those years to this day. You know, some foreign critics still say that India is too poor to afford space trips. What would you like to say to them now? Well, as you know, uh, landing normally when it happens in conventional atmospheric conditions like that on Earth, when you want to drop something down onto the surface of the Earth very softly, you do it in different ways, but mainly by making use of the atmospheric friction, which is always there, and also by deploying things like parachutes, which will reduce the velocity of impact. But as you know, the moon has no atmosphere, so it's all vacuum up there. So when you put down, for example, in Chandrayaan 2, the lander, as it, as it separates itself from the orbiter and as it has to come down, by thrust motors, you've got to maneuver the movement of that lander so nicely that it comes down with very little velocity and lands perfectly on its legs without straining itself structurally or otherwise. And also knowing the soil conditions of the moon, you've got to make sure that this maneuver is absolutely proper. And for the first time, since India is landing such a lander on the moon's surface, the technology obviously has to be proved, but good simulation has already gone through in Bangalore Center, and we hope that it will go well. There's a big debate raging. Should we put Indians in space now? You know, your question prompts me to quote something what Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who is now revered as the father of India's space technology. And if it's okay with you, I uh, hear yes. a ready quote from his speech, which he gave on 2nd February 1966, when Tumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station was dedicated to the United Nations. Dr. Sarabhai was there, along with Mrs. Sindra Gandhi and various others. And this is what he said, which is very relevant to your question. And it says, There, there, there are some who question the relevance of space activities in a developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose. We do not have the fantasy of competing with the economically advanced nations in the, explanation, in the explorations of the moon or the planets or manned space flight. But we are convinced that if we are to play a meaningful role nationally and in the Committee of Nations, we must be second to none in the application of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society which we find in our country. And 
we should note that the application of sophisticated technologies and methods of analysis to our problems is not to be confused with embarking on grandiose schemes whose primary impact is for show rather than for progress measured in hard economic and social terms. What Dr. Sarabhai said was that we should not be shy to adopt any technology for our good. And we don't have to be inventors or discoverers of that technology. And that is how he said we can leapfrog. In fact, in one of his statements he said, it is not whether India needs space technology. It is whether we can live without space technology. Today, if you look at the way our country has developed in various measures, communication, education, uh, weather prediction, and remote sensing, even medi medicine. And if you know that our mobile technologies and mobile communications will never be there if space technology is not there, we know how important it is for us to adopt this technology. So I feel that it's very relevant for a country like India to do what it wants to do and not be bothered about by criticisms from people uh, who do not want us to progress, maybe. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.